guys, today we'll be talking about book value per share and earnings per share. But what exactly is book value per share and earnings per share? So book value per share, or simply referred to as BVPS, is the amount that would be paid on each share assuming the company is liquidated and the amount available to stockholders is exactly the amount reported as stockholders' equity. Since this is only for a basic accounting class, we would only be focusing on computing for the book value per share of a corporation with only one class of share. So the formula for computing book value per share is total shareholders' equity divided by the number of outstanding shares. Remember that when computing for book value per share, the subscriptions receivable is no longer deducted to when getting your total shareholders' equity. Take this example. Given that your share capital is 200,000, you have 2,000 shares, 100 par value, and then you have a share premium of 50,000 and retained earnings of 210,000 pesos. So to get your book value per share, you have to get the total shareholders' equity. So you just have to add up all the components. So that amounts to 460 divided by the total number of outstanding shares, which is 2,000 shares. So dividing the total shareholders' equity by the number of outstanding shares, you get 230 pesos book value per share. Earnings per share is the amount attributable to every ordinary share of capital outstanding during the period. In other words, it's basically the net income attributable to each ordinary share for the period. Take note that earnings per share only pertains to ordinary shares primarily because preference shares already have a definite rate of return. Earnings per share can be presented in the income statement in two ways, namely basic earnings per share and diluted earnings per share. However, we would only be focusing on basic earnings per share. Earnings per share presentation is required for enterprises whose shares are publicly traded or those who are still in the process of issuing ordinary shares in the public securities market. Take note, Public enterprises are required to present EPS while non-public enterprises are not. So why do we compute for earnings per share? First is because it is a determinant of the market price of an ordinary share. Therefore, earnings per share is indicative of its attractiveness as an investment. Second is because earnings per share is a measure of performance of management in conducting its operations. Third would be because earnings per share is the basis of dividend policies of the company. So the formula for earnings per share is quite simple. It is simply the net income attributable to ordinary shareholders divided by the total number of outstanding ordinary shares. To get the net income attributable to ordinary shareholders, we simply deduct the dividends for preference shareholders from the total net income for the period. If the preference share is cumulative, the preference dividend for the current year is deducted from total net income, whether declared or not. If preference share is non-cumulative, the preference dividend is only deducted from the net income when there is a declaration. So take note that in either case, dividends in arrears is no longer considered. So let's apply the formula in this problem. Given the following information, so you have a preference share capital of 100,000, ordinary share capital of 1 million, and net income of 1,500,000. When computing for EPS, considering that your preference shares are cumulative, we need to deduct the dividends attributable to the preference shares whether there is a declaration or not. So your numerator would be equal to 1,500,000 which is your net income less the dividends for preference share capital which we get by multiplying 10% its rate of return with the total capital of 100,000. 
and then you divide it by 20,000 outstanding ordinary shares. So your EPS would now be 74.5 pesos per share. Assuming we still have the same given as earlier, but now our preference shares are non-cumulative, we consider two situations. One is when there is a declaration by the board of directors for dividends, and the other is when there is no declaration. So if there is a declaration, we have to deduct the preference share dividends from the net income and divide the total by the outstanding ordinary shares. So we get the same EPS as we computed earlier. So that's 74.5 pesos per share. Now, if there is no declaration, we no longer have to deduct the preference share div dividends from the net income. So we simply divide the net income by the outstanding sh ordinary shares and we get an EPS of 75 pesos per share. So that is all for this video and I hope you guys learned a lot.